Welcome Canada to another edition of Pop TV powered by Pop Ticker. As you heard, the beautiful, soulful voice, Kendall Thompson is in the house and you were just listening to a live rendition of MVP from the album OK Cool, which is available on iTunes and Spotify. So I am so excited. Uh, again, Canadian artist, and we are so lucky to have her here on a Sunday evening as we all gear down to get cozy. So with no further ado, we have Kendall Bang right there. How's it going? Hey, I'm so good. How are you? Good. So I know it's Sunday. It's, you know, evening time and, you know, you're all comfortable looking good. I'm in my cozy robe. I love it. And I love your music. I mean, I can't get enough of it. I was just saying, I mean, it's so cozy and, you know, it's just captivating. I feel like I get sucked in right away. So thank you. I'm happy to hear that. It's always it's always nice to get good feedback. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. I mean, that's the thing, right? We have such amazing Canadian artists and, you know, it's all about discovery because, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know how the indie scene is, I'm sure, right? So there's so much talent and it's so nice to discover you and, and other Canadian bands. Thanks. Yeah, it's true. There's so much good music out there just waiting for people to find it. And like, I know, all myself and all the other artists I know included are just like, we're just doing our thing and trying to be out there. But like the internet moves so fast sometimes it can be a little hard to keep up. So. Yeah. And um, so speaking of, I mean, again, it's so the song we were just listening to called MVP and it's with your album. Okay, cool. Um, so how, what was your inspiration about it? I'm going to actually bring up um, your album art cover in a second. And um, here we go. I'll bring it up in the stream so you can see it right here. So this is a collaboration with artist Christina Stein. Yes. And she's from Calgary, right? Yeah. Um, well, she lives there now. Actually, Christina and I went to public school together and we were really good friends when we were like 10 years old for a while. And then, you know, we grew up and she eventually made her way to Calgary and she ended up working on something that uh, my graphic designer like worked at and they connected and her and I reconnected and then all of a sudden she's doing my album artwork. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so you're uh, originally from Allison, Ontario yes. and you're living in Toronto now. So, um, you know, how has the journey been? I know you're really big into um, self care, which I really love. And I love your Instagram because you're so inspiring because I feel that right like we we look up to so many musicians and you know we don't realize how much pressure and stress it comes you know it's not as easy as people think right you might see um you know a rock star or you know an r&b artist and you think wow you know they you know everything was smooth sailing right they made it but um tell us more about about your journey and and the difficulties and how sort of the self-care came into the picture for you um yeah i th i think it's just like it it was kind of fine being in Alliston and living with my parents and having having the support of a small town. Um, and then it was kind of like when I moved to Toronto and I was hit with a little bit more reality of just like, oh, it's not gonna be as easy to, to make it as I thought. And then it's also been a process of learning what it really means to me to make it because for a long time, it was something completely different than what I even wanted. Um, so yeah, it was just like a lot of feeling as though I, I had to do what other people wanted me to do or, and it was also like when I moved to Toronto, there wasn't Instagram or anything. So during my process, like Instagram and Facebook and all these things became more popular, like influencers started existing and, and uh, it was hard for me to wrap my head around it. So I was like really late to the game to all of that stuff. And then it, it was like playing shows and everything weren't what I thought it was. Like I thought that you would play a show and you would get paid accordingly and, and you would just make other connections with other artists and play more shows. And like that totally happened in the beginning 
with the connections, especially when it came to like, that's when I met my producer and a lot of other cool artists that I'm still friends with. But um, uh, there's a lot of promoters out there that were taking advantage of young artists. And there was just like a lot of, I remember there was like, at this point in Toronto, there was like a lot of shows going on where they would just like stack all these artists on top of each other for the show and it'd be like, okay, you get 20 minutes, five minutes breakdown. Okay, they get 20 minutes. Oh. And uh, it's just, it, it, yeah, it kind of became like, it started to feel like a bit of a rat race and that really just emotionally exhausted me. So I had to step back and really decide how I wanted to express myself as an artist and do what felt good to me. Um, and that's where I'm at now. And it just feels so much better because like, I'm not saying yes to every single show. And I'm not like even posting on Instagram every day. And like, sometimes I don't feel like posting anything or, um, and so it's a lot slower than maybe I should be, <laughs> but it just, it's better for me. And I had to realize that like my priority is like me having joy in what I do and me being happy. So if that means like working a little bit slower, then so be it. And I'll just have to enjoy the journey along the way. I love the message. I think it's so powerful because, you know, again, we often see artists, you know, that have achieved incredible success and you know they can't go anywhere you know without uh, being followed i mean it's scary right but they, yeah. they they get a burnout a severe burnout right where um they get to the top and then you know they just they they i mean experience real health issues and stuff so i think it's really really nice and i think that's one of the things i admire so much about you is is your you know um your real uh message of self-care and that you know it's okay you don't have to bind to the pressures out there because i think we all feel it yeah. um we all feel that oh we have to post this many times a day or i didn't you know um I i'm not doing this and everybody else in my you know industry sector are is doing this um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you only have one body, you only have, you know, your health. So you have to really watch that, right? It's so true. And that's where, like, I think this whole, like, lockdown coronavirus stuff, like, other than, unfortunately, like, yeah, the scary aspects of people getting sick and people losing their jobs, just, um, I've really loved the fact that it's forced us all to just slow down because even me being aware of the fact that I, I needed to take things a bit more slow, when I was forced to actually stop and be in lockdown, I was still noticing how much I wanted to just keep pushing with my own energy and keep producing for some, for some weird reason. And, and I was like, why, why am I, like I, I need to be okay with just like putting something out there and letting it exist and then seeing what happens with it and then doing something else. It doesn't need to be this constant uh, exertion of energy. Yeah, no, I really, really love your music. I think you have such a beautiful voice. Like I said, when I listen to, you know, the intro song, I mean, it just grabs you. I think you're just so talented and, uh, um, so w in terms of uh, like talking about musicians and, and sort of, you know, how difficult it is to navigate COVID-19, um, you know, amongst your peers uh, and yourself, how is the music industry dealing with the show cancellations? I mean, I know there's a few more shows happening, but with social distancing, but how's that going? Um, people that I know that were, were very, very actively playing shows definitely felt a bit worried because that was that, that was like a lot of their livelihood was being taken away from them. But I do notice that a lot of people are getting really creative with how, with how to do things. And there's like a lot of different platforms now uh, where people can be performing on live, online. Like I remember too, like so many people were doing Instagram lives and stuff. And, and like even a few uh, streaming services have set up options to actually donate money now to the musicians, which wasn't available before. Um, and then, you know, the, we were able to have a few more people at the sh at shows. So um, a lot of outdoor gigs were happening. Um, but yeah, I think it I, it either caused some people to just be a little bit more creative, or or sit with the fact that like they're afraid and they don't know what to do. And 
and and then they kind of discovered other talents that they have within music um so yeah it was it, the uncertainty like brought a lot of different things out in people. But I think for the most part, I did notice like everyone that I'm connected to, even through the fears that they had, somehow came out with a different outlook as to how to do music. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I have to ask you more about Alliston, Ontario. So is your family still back there? I've never been. So tell me more. How, oh, okay. what is it like? <laughs> um, well, where are you from? Where do you live? Oh, it's complicated. So I'm, I'm like you, I'm currently in Ottawa. Oh, but okay. um, yeah, actually, a lot of people don't know. I was born in Kingston, Ontario. Okay. But I grew up most part of my life in Montreal and then did a stint in Edmonton. And now I'm here. Okay. So I guess, yeah, I don't really, I can't, I was like hoping I could compare it to some of those places. But um, so it's an hour northwest of Toronto. My whole family is still there. Um, my sister and her husband live in Creamware. Um, so they're not far, but um, yeah, it's it's grown a lot since I grew up there because it's so, well, it's not so close, but it's not that far from Toronto. So a lot of people have just stayed working in the city, but moved to Alliston. And uh, yeah, like, I don't know, it was very stereotypical, like small town. Like I I worked at Dairy Queen there for like, five or six years um like there was one big high school and there was another high school in a neighboring town but yeah so there was like 2,000 kids at this high school I think there was probably like maybe there was under there's probably under 10,000 people I guess it's maybe a medium-sized town because they <laughs> the neighboring towns there was like all these little towns that were around 15 minutes away from there so actually going back to the dairy queen so do you actually ever get sick of you know eat, getting you know dairy queen when you're working there or oh my god i don't think no i didn't <laughs> i like you kind of do but you kind of don't like you're just like i don't want to eat it but i'm gonna eat it anyways i always wonder that i was always wondering you know if you work at one of those shops right like dairy queen or i don't know um mcdonald's or whatever if you actually ever get sick of you know eating uh some of the treats you know that you serve up so yeah no we we drank good. like we drank we didn't <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not drinking. I'm just having some sparkling water in a fancy glass. I was going to say, what are you having? It looks like a little white wine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> this, is, this is a sober interview, everybody. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. No, it was like we got, we ate a lot of, we laid a lot of ice cream. And then when it would slow down, like it would close for like a month or two in the winter. And it would get really slow before it closed. And we would just like make the weirdest concoctions of food, make up weird games, like <laughs> like a bunch of teenagers hanging out at an ice cream store. So that's hilarious. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it was fun times. I know when I was growing up too, you know, we all worked, um, you know, during school and we made a lot of friends, did a lot of funny, fun things. So it's always good memories. Um, but talking about your musical inspiration, I mean, you grew up in Allison, Ontario. So how did you, I mean, did you come from a musical background uh, in terms of your family? Where Was your family into music or singers or how did you get into that? What was your... Yeah, I think it was just like, my my dad loved music. So there would always like, and he loved the Beach Boys. So there would always be kind of like a music playing, like especially on the weekends. Um, and then, yeah, I think like I, I mostly just started, I started singing really young. I was, I started singing like around the age of three and I would just like sing under the table and stuff. And then I took interest in kind of like uh, like listening to music more privately. And so I had my little tape recorder and I'd go up to my room and like listen to the hits of the 50s, like my parents' tapes and stuff. And New Kids on the Block. And and I would just like hang out in my room all day and listen to music and kind of got an ear for what I thought sounded nice. And, and it, it really wasn't until I got like a little bit older because um, I kind of just like stopped singing for a while. I just 
found it embarrassing if, if people heard me. So I would just like stop doing it. And uh, yeah, when I, I made a friend who sang and kind of got back into it. And then I was like, oh, okay, I want to do this. But it really wasn't until high school where I felt inspired by, I heard Lauren Hill's Unplugged album. And when I heard that, I was like, oh my God, okay. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to make. Like, I want to be like her. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it was like, that to me was was really what, what turned the key as to like, what kind of artist I want to be. I'd already kind of dabbled in a bit of songwriting and stuff like that, but that was that was the album that, that did it for me, that made me want to not, well, I guess not take the plunge because I already decided, but it just gave me a direction. I love that. I actually read that uh, about you in, um, you know, one of the uh, bios I was reading that Lauren Hill was one of your big time inspirations. Yes. So I grew up in, you know, the 90s. And so, oh, my God, like she is amazing. I mean, everything in terms of her empowerment, you know, her message of uh, inspiring other female rappers at the time. Yes. Um, like what an what a beautiful talent, uh, Lauren Hill. The miseducation of Lauren Hill, and uh, I can go on and on, but so good, amazing. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, love her, and um, yeah, it's cool too. Cause like I was thinking about it not that not that long ago, but to kind of go back to like where um, when I decided to kind of like slow down and like I don't need to keep putting things out there and and I I actually like took a took a minute to really think about the the artists that I admire and I'm like oh my god the people that I really admire excuse me aren't um they're not putting out albums left right and center they're not like out being seen all the time like they're doing projects that in my eyes I'm seeing it as they're doing projects that really resonate with them and so I'm like, why? Like, that's what I want to do. Like, that's to me, that's the dream. To me, that's success. To like be at a point where like I can be financially stable, but like just pick things that make me happy. Yeah, no, I think that's really good. I think there's so much pressure. I can't even. So this is the thing. I mean, my background is you know in business and you know entrepreneurship. I mean, I'm a startup. It's you know. So I, it's I, I have so much respect, and I say it all the time for Canadian musicians. Um, as well as Canadian athletes, because I feel like, you know, the hustle and the grind is unreal. The pressure is unreal. So, I mean, same thing as, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, you really have to, um, yeah, take self-care into, into your lifestyle because it could eat you up, right? I mean, we see it all the time. I mean, entrepreneurs burn out, uh, athletes burn out, musicians burn out. So it's something that you really, really have to take care of yourself. So I know for myself, I, um, you know, people ask me all the time, how do you do it, right? And uh, for me, my, you know, how can I say, uh, you know, de-stress is working out. So whether it's running or it's, you know, doing um, Muay Thai or, you know, whatever, lifting weights, it's it's how I de-stress. Yeah, bang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought of that. <laughs> But uh, for yourself, I mean, um, and even I got into yoga and oh my God. So I never thought of doing yoga until I was, you know, pregnant and I, you know, had to slow down because, you know, I couldn't with the weight I was carrying. And yeah, I felt like jelly. I felt like I had just come out of a, a 90 minute, you know, massage therapy. Like it feels so, so good. So that's something I'm looking to do more of again, like get back into yoga. But yeah. for yourself, I mean, I know you do um, several things. So what's your go-to when it comes to de-stressing? Um, I think like it depends. I, I've i kind of been able to cultivate a routine that like I like to start off my day just being able to like completely start clean. So I, I do really like to be able to just like wake up and meditate for sure. Um, I think like if there's one thing that I have to make sure I have to do, that's something that I, I am being really strict on lately because it's just like I do notice when I don't do it, it just becomes like very scattered and I, I'm kind of all over the place. So I like to just like start off with that because I feel like it makes me more centered throughout the whole day. Um, and then lately it's been like if, if I'm 
not stressed out and then all of a sudden something stressful happens, I really just try and stay present and be in the moment because it's like, well, to be honest, even trying to connect to you, it was like I was getting a little stressed out because I'm like, this should work. Why is it not working? Oh, my God. And I was like, it's going to work. Try it on this. You'll figure it out. And just kind of being centered again. And look, it worked. It's all Fine. good. <laughs> I'm but the I same way, though. I was going to the same thing. I'm like, ah, okay, five minutes, you know, until we go live. And, you know, the technology is crashing out again. So, yeah. Yeah, we made it work. <laughs> we made it work. I think that's the thing, right? Is we really have to, things always blow up in our mind a lot, um, you know, bigger than they actually are. So it's really being more, um, yeah, just kind of bringing things down a bit, right? Internally, I'm the same way. Yeah, it's so, it's so easy to get like hopped up on something stressful. And it's like, okay, wait, is this actually really important? Like, usually it's not. Yeah, it's not that important. So it's fine. But I do really like yoga, too. I like definitely need to get back into that as well. Um, it's been weird not working out that much. And I think it's been weirder how I, I went from like working out very consistently for a long time to then actually noticing that I'm OK only working out once or twice a week. I don't need to push myself to this four or five times a week workout regime. Yeah, you see COVID-19, I mean, as, as you know, difficult as it's been, there's been a lot of self-realization. I'm the same way. I used to work out a lot and I had to, you know, cut down because I, I can't go to the gym anymore. I can't, yeah. you know, and I'm like, it's all right. Like, <laughs> same yeah. thing. It's yeah. I, like it, I mean, I understand it's a little bit scary and like, especially financially for a lot of people, but like, the self-realization part is nice and just having the time it's like oh my god i mean i'm still not back to work yet so i've got so much time <laughs> but it's nice it's nice it to have nice. more time yeah, yeah and so i mean you are such an amazing support local advocate kendall i love that about you when we had the support local canada challenge i mean you jumped at it right away and i love that so i just want to ask you i had to ask you so any other shout outs you have for us we would love to know what other brands um you know kendall loves well yeah i think i i forget the third one i said in my video oh I, yeah a few skincare brands that i love like I love Province Apothecary. I love Wildcraft. Um, and then, so my best friend owns a coffee shop called Madeiras that, I mean, it's not just because it's her coffee shop that I love it, but I just like love it. It's amazing. Um, and then my uh, friend, Emily, I, oh yeah. Sorry, I'm like looking, it's so weird to like look at yourself in the camera and I'm like touching the wrong side of my face. <laughs> I know, it happens all the time. So you already yeah. went the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm wearing earrings from, oh, it's this way, yeah. Okay. Oh, where, where, where am I going? I'm going to go this way. <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> there, we got it. I'm wearing earrings. That's tricky. Aura. There. Oh, Aura. nice. It's like a, a small, fine jewelry brand. Um, and yeah, they have some really beautiful pieces. If you want to treat yourself, which I, that's what I did at the beginning of COVID because I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to buy myself some gold earrings. <laughs> we did well. You did well. You got that in right on time. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. That's amazing. I should have got my hair cut. I have to actually have to go. I have to go. I'm, I'm, my hair is sort of growing out right now. I mean, it's nice, but it's getting a little dry at the end. Yeah. <laughs> have you done like, I, I did do a haircut like as soon as the salons opened. Did you do that at all or you just have steered clear? I have steer so you know one of the biggest things is my parents um so my mom gets really really bad bronchitis so she's very prone to it so I've been really bunkered down but I think now that you know um I think you know this the the safety protocols are a little bit more you know pronounced and stuff like that I think I will be making a trip down finally but yeah to answer your question no I never got that you know trim in but yeah well that makes sense if you've got other family members to look out for like it's just me here so I was like I'm getting my hair cut. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah, I have to, I do have to get another trim again, but yeah, it was kind of like, it was nice when a few things opened up and 
And then I was like, okay, I feel like a person again. And I still have all this time. So <laughs> that's so true. I was really tough at first, you know, when uh, everything was literally shut down and people were panic buying. Like, remember those days we'd see on the news, people buying all this toilet paper and it was really scary. It was, it was, cause it was just like, I mean, I knew that it didn't, I, I feel like there was a lot of people that knew that it didn't have to go like that. But of course, when someone is that scared, you, you can't really talk any sense into them and you just have to allow them to be scared and have their experience. But yeah, I was, I was kind of like, I didn't want to like run into someone who was harboring that much fear. Like I didn't want to like grab some toilet paper and then have someone be like, I need a toilet paper. So that's where I felt afraid. <laughs> No, because people were really, I think at that time, again, because really people didn't have the facts. So people were really antsy and, you know, stressed out. So I felt that. I mean, we went, um, you know, to do a run at the local grocery store. And yeah, you can just feel sort of the, um, the stress in the air. But I feel like now things are much better. I mean, even though we're dealing with the second wave, I think people have a better handle. Um, and people are a lot more relaxed and calm. So, yeah, I agree. I, I think yeah of course like no one's ever gone through anything like this so people didn't really know what to do or how they would even ever react so i'm sure even some people were surprised at their own reactions but yeah it's like it's good now that no one's panic buying for the paper because that's yeah. annoying <laughs> that was really bad <laughs> <laughs> So um, before we, uh, you know, close off, I wanted to ask you, so what's next for Kendall? I mean, have you, I know you're enjoying your time, which is great for creativity and, you know, and yeah, hundred percent. I love the robe and the Sunday bed. <laughs> it's like a spa day, but um, what's next? Any plans or? Yeah, I, so I am chipping away at, at new music. Um, and I have actually, I, I have like quite a few uh, features that I've done, one that will be out soon um, with an artist that goes by Aga, who's from the UK. So we actually connected pre-COVID and we wrote a song together and it took us a while then because COVID hit to record it. And so that should be out soon. Um, yeah, that'll be really fun. It's so cool to work with someone who's like literally across the ocean and connect with, with him. Um, and then I will, I will do a, a show on that'll, that'll be like a online show, uh, probably, probably early November at this point. But yeah, if everyone, if wants to keep up with me on my socials, which is just at Kendall.Thompson or at Kendall Thompson on, on Twitter and Facebook, um, then I will definitely keep, keep everybody in the loop as to when that will happen. Sounds good. And we'll be excited. We'll share that with our Support Local Canada group. Yeah. And uh, Kendall, again, I have to say, I love you. You're amazing. And I love your Instagram. If you haven't checked it out, Canada, you got to support this singer musician. Kendall is amazing. And, uh, you know, check her out on Instagram. You have a website as well. Uh, yeah. Kendall, any last words to your fans out there? um just thank you thank you for all the support like even the people who are a bit quiet sometimes i i really appreciate i really appreciate the support that i've gotten over the years so thank you. that's amazing thank you for having me it's yeah so finally meet you and yeah you as well it's so nice to finally have our chat yes <laughs> <laughs> long overdue well yeah. thank you so much kendall for your time i know it's a sunday so thank you for joining us no problem i'm gonna do a face mask after this and just relax awesome. so thank you Lucky. for having me you're most welcome so enjoy the rest of your sunday and canada thank you so much for joining us here on pop tv powered by pop ticker we'll see you next sunday at eight until then from kendall and i have a great rest of your sunday take care everybody <laughs>